Well, first off, I want to thank you guys that came in the morning, uh, being here early, being part of the day. You guys get a chance to see that. Um, I'm glad that you uh, get a little bit of an idea of how it works. Uh, this is our Super Bowl for signing, and a uh, big day for the coaches, players, everybody involved. There's so many people that uh, help in this process to get these guys here. It really is um, a special day, and for you guys to be able to share that with us, uh, we appreciate it. Uh, we were here at 5 in the morning. Germany Brown to get his um, NLI in, and it's different now. Is the fax machine uh, non-existent? So we had uh, nobody around the fax machine today. It's all about uh, taking pictures of it, sending it in, and uh, much easier, much more convenient, and uh, we're able to get the information without the stress of the fax machine and the paper and all those things going out. And you say fax machine to these guys, they have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, but a great morning, and. Uh, for the coaches that put in all the time with these guys, uh, I think back to Chase Cord uh, when Coach Hill had him on the phone this time last year, and we're having a conversation with him, uh, talking about Boise State. Hey, this is, might be a right place for you. Could be a good fit. Let's get you here on campus. And all of a sudden, here he is, uh, officially signing today. So it's a long process. You build a relationship with these guys, and our coaches do a tremendous job of doing it the right way, and there's really nothing to sell from the Boise State standpoint. Uh, we're just sharing uh, with these recruits who we are, what we're about, and we hope that we find the right guys that feel the same way. Um, Darren Usher, you know, um, I want to say thank you to him, uh, is our director of recruiting, and probably has the best relationship of all of us with all these guys, talks to him every day. Uh, anything these guys need, he's on it, um, he's obviously, constantly searching for players and if we have somebody that we don't get or miss uh, he's on top of that Chris Ross as well uh, right there alongside and Chris Ross uh, when Junior Adams left Chris Ross the next day was uh, or the next couple days was literally on the road recruiting and so he was up and running ready to go uh, we had him in Texas but now to keep building these relationships with these guys he was ready and did a tremendous job Taylor Tharp uh, for organizing the weekends and making sure that these guys feel what it is to be a Bronco um, and to keep everything coordinated uh, that way. So, so many other people I can't thank uh, in the whole entire process, but um, it brings us all here today. We got 19 guys that we signed, 13 today. Uh, Riley Wimpy, who had already signed, but is gonna be a part of this class, is in there. Um, we also had an exciting day too. We put uh, Jake Knight, uh, on scholarship today, so that was uh, something that is well deserved. Uh, he certainly <coughs> earned, but was also a big part of today, um, and in a moment for our football team, we we're in here as a as an entire group, and excited for him to be a part of this class officially on scholarship. And so, uh, I think we met our needs, what we needed to to get. Um, I think we feel good about where we are right now. We have a couple that we're gonna be able to use. And there's always gonna be guys that, that uh, are late guys that we're gonna be able to find. And if they're the right fit for our program, we're gonna be able to recruit them and bring them in. If not, it gives us options, uh, which is always a good thing. And we've done that for a lot of years and found some really good players uh, when all said and done. But overall, the guys behind me and the names, each one of these guys, uh, there's a different story. Uh, there's a purpose to why they're here. Uh, each one of them has goals and dreams. Every one of their families um, were a part of this process, and we're just happy to be where we are right now with the group of guys that we have, and certainly excited about our future, where we're going, uh, and this group of guys coming in. So, uh, exciting day, it's not over yet. We've been talking about these guys quite a bit. We're gonna talk about them again right now. Uh, we're gonna be out at Big Al's tonight, and uh, we're gonna celebrate with Bronco Nation and talk about these guys and brag on them, because that's what today is all about. Uh, and I tell the guys this all the time, on signing day, you get, you get to do it one time, take advantage of it. Some of these guys are so focused, they're waiting for the workout, they're waiting for the football part of it, it's like, hold up. Take time to enjoy uh, this moment because you're have, you have an opportunity now to come to a great place, you have an opportunity to get your school paid for, you get a chance to play major division one college football, to live your dream, to be around great people, and for your family as well, and I think about that, um, there were some really emotional meetings because these parents, when you sit in there and these guys uh, have committed to you and they realize that they're going to be able to do things uh, 
through the game of football and being a good student, being a good person, um, that is an advantage. Uh, what an awesome opportunity to realize that goal and dream. Now, when they come here, it's time to get to work. They understand that as well. But uh, today is a special day, and, and uh, we're proud to be a part of it. So with that, open up for questions. I know you kind of have to wait, you know, three, four, maybe even five <clears throat> years to find out how good this recruiting class is. But how do you kind of come away from actual signing day and evaluate the progress you made in, in, yeah. the, in the class itself? Well, I think the overall success rate is, did these guys stay and graduate? Because that, you know, again, football is never guaranteed. These guys have to come and they have to work. They got to prepare, they got to perform to actually go out there and play. Football can be taken away like that. Uh, so with the families, this is also about their education. And are we graduating these players? You know, are they on track to graduate, all right? Is this the place uh, that they want to continue their education? Uh, are they getting a chance to contribute as a player? They don't have, you know, we're not saying every one of them is a superstar, uh, but do they do the things that, that we talked about in the meetings we had and the reason why they committed? That's really how you see success uh, from those players. Not everybody does that. You know, very rarely, it doesn't ever happen that a class you sign, everybody stays and finishes. You hope that happens, um, but that's how I look at it. And do we have the type of relationships that we talked about that we built over the course of time while they're here and you know now that we're we're, we're going into this next year um, and this class we've recruited the majority now and not every single one of the guys on this team but uh, they've been a part of this staff and, and what we're about and I think we're seeing more of that uh, we're seeing the relationships we're seeing um, things that we have been through in the recruiting process to where they are now uh, some of these guys as sophomores and juniors, and, and it's going to pay off, you know, because that culture now with these guys coming in, they're going to be the ones that are learning from the guys we have here now. And so I've been proud of our guys. Um, the guys have worked hard. We graduated our players. They played well. Um, and I think you look at it like that. You know, how many championships you win, they'll pay attention to those things. They certainly want to do that. I look at the big picture and go, are we making a difference? in these kids' lives? Are we preparing them for life after football? Because all they've ever done is football in school. Mm -hmm. Football in school, that's all they've ever done. And if they get a chance to go on and play, the school part's out of it, they'll play in the NFL. But are these guys leaving here prepared for that moment uh, when football and school is done and they're ready to get out in the real world? So, you know, that's, that's how I look at it. You mentioned meeting your needs or filling your needs. What what did you see as the biggest needs in this class? And yeah. I know it's obvious with the positions, I guess we can tell, but uh, what, what characteristics or things did you want from guys in this class? Yeah. Well, quarterback, you know, we had that, and uh, obviously that changed uh, when Tommy Stewart decided that he was going to uh, pursue somewhere to play. Uh, you know, this is the thing I, when I look at coaches, they always have an answer. You, you have to be prepared for so many things because you deal with people, and that's okay. Uh, they're not products, they're people. and. Some guys, they make decisions based off whatever um, they're thinking at that time. And do you have an answer for it? Well, we did. And, you know, Rathen Reisdorf comes in here, and, uh, and we like him. He's been a great addition. And he's going to get a chance to go out there and compete. And that's the one thing about this quarterback class. Neither one of them were like, well, you know, you have a guy there and all that. They're just like, do I get an opportunity to compete? Yes. All right, I'm good. That's all guys want to know, the true competitors. Uh, wide receiver was a big need on offense. Uh, running back was not, and then McNichols decides that he wants to you know, pursue the NFL. Well, that changed <clears throat> our numbers, but we still were going to take one. We talked about taking two, but felt like one was going to be the best for us this year, and we'll, we'll look at taking two in the next class. Uh, but wide receiver was a need. I wanted to sign three. You know, we were talking about taking two, but we felt like three was going to be the best option for us uh, to keep building that room and uh, create competition in there. So that was obviously big. And then O-line, we have a lot of good young O-linemen, but we still needed to fill some needs and numbers. And, uh, you know, you get a guy like John Ojuku that comes in here, he rolls early, and here's a guy that getting our hands on him right now, uh, fantastic student, but this is only going to make him better as a player. Isaiah Moore battled for him, and all of a sudden, you know, he's coming to Boise State, and here's a guy that's going to come in here and compete right away to play. So we have a guy now that, um, 
and Zach Troughton, who's here. These two guys are competing to play right away, uh, two junior college players. That leaves us with an opportunity to maybe take another old lineman if needed, or we bump that number forward because we do like the young ones that we got. And we got a lot of guys coming back. On the defensive side, D-line, um, Sonatane Louie, we put him on scholarship, so we did not have a need for an inside interior D lineman. We needed to take a stud. Isa Clemente was the guy. And his story, back and forth, back and forth a little bit, all said and done. Coach Caldwell, Coach Avalos, those guys did a tremendous job of continuing that relationship. And, you know, sometimes it's just a matter of, you know, what really matters when it's all said and done. And I think Isa saw that and his family. And, and we had a great relationship. And he could see when he came back on his visit, this is for me. This is where I need to be. Um, linebacker on the defensive side, that was really a, a position of need. You know, we're talking about taking four, Riley Wimpy's coming back. Now, if you start to get in that cycle again, if you take four, you're going to lose four eventually. You're, you're going to be back into that cycle. And so I think where we are right now uh, with Roman, uh, with Zeke in there, uh, Braden Boyd, those guys, I think that gives us good depth. It allows us to maybe uh, find another one uh, we could now potentially or hey we have good depth at that position and we'll we'll catch up in the next recruiting cycle um, and so that was obviously a big one for us but I feel good about the guys we have now they're ready to play um, Zeke will not be when he comes in he's got an ACL a lot like Tyson but he's behind where Tyson was so he won't be uh, probably ready to play when it's all said and done which is okay He's, a, he's too good of a player, too good of a person, has a tremendous family. Uh, we were okay with that. We want to help him rehab. And then DB, you know, we had a couple safeties, but really a corner. And uh, I think the need, you know, you asked this earlier, but I think if you look at our guys, they're, they're kind of two-way players. Um, they've got good ball skills. And, you know, that was something that we looked at, not necessarily because of the way the season went, that we have to have guys going out there just to intercept passes and all that, but we're just getting better um, football players, the guys that play football at, at more positions was one of the things. And, and we kind of looked at it like that, like this guy's a returner, he plays on offense, he plays on defense. Um, I liked that when I was watching the film the coaches were bringing, I'm like, this guy's kind of all over the field and doesn't come off. You like that. And I think that was something that just kind of caught on because I'd made a few comments about it. I think all the coaches were on the same page. Like we're just getting guys that are just playing football more and maybe better football players overall. It's kind of how we looked at this class.